with that. All right, you're on. Okay, thanks. So, like I said, that's kind of a big deal. I'd like to make that clear at the outset because a lot of folks have been using Dropbox for a long time and they did not understand the difference in sharing, so it's kind of important. Any questions on that? Okay. All right, next in the outline, um, we've talked about sharing, keeping files up to date between two computers. Um, you guys have already downloaded the app on the tablets and the phones, so we're not going to cover that. All right, the bottom of page three and the top of page four, I mentioned these three apps, but I'm not really going to stress using them since Microsoft has entered the game. No, my Apple's apps are called Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. Some of you may be familiar with these. They correspond to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. There also used to be an app on page four, and the app was called CloudOn. Interesting app, and it's not out there anymore. They kind of got run out of business by Microsoft because what CloudOn did, it was underwritten by Amazon, and CloudOn gave you the ability to have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint on your tablet effectively, so you could edit. Um, the problem with the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint is that they were the desktop versions, and desktop versions are not optimized for a tablet. So in this case, what we have, and I don't know if all of you have it, how many of you have downloaded to your tablet or phone Word, Excel, and PowerPoint? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't, you want to do that, and I'll show you why. Because when you do that, you go beyond just looking at your documents, Frank. So on my new MacBook Pro, I'm trying to avoid paying Microsoft $10 a month for those right. programs. I'm just trying to learn to use the Apple programs. Is there any disadvantage to that? Not really, other than, uh, I'll give you a suggestion though, however, uh, other than um, um, they're different. They're quite different. I, I know. I, uh, pages. The pages is fairly simple, but the uh, keynote is yeah. driving me crazy. Well, here's my suggestion. Uh, you may want to try, any of you may want to be aware of this. Anybody familiar with openoffice.org? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd go to openoffice.org, and they'll essentially let you, and it'll run on the Mac. It's, I'm almost positive it runs on the Mac. And you can download, essentially, OpenOffice, which is written by a team of developers, and it's essentially free Microsoft Office. Really? It's, yeah, com it's comparable good. to version That's 7. OpenOffice.org. Yeah. Yeah, and what happens is they save to their own file formats, but you can change that so they save as Word, Excel, and PowerPoint respectively, and then they can open Word, Excel, and PowerPoint uh, natively. So we, we did that at home. We wanted Amy to have an editor but didn't want to uh -huh. go get a licensed copy of Office, so we right. got OpenOffice on there. Okay. Now, uh, it, you got to check and see if it runs on Mac. I think it does. I think it does. Now, when I bought this computer, I actually bought it used on eBay, got a great deal, and the guy just happened to have installed a gazillion programs on there, and he had Word, Excel, and PowerPoint for the Mac, which worked really, really nice. I know they're a lot cheaper, by the way, than their Microsoft, I mean, than their PC counterparts. Really? Yeah. So you might, you might check that. Hang on just a second, I'll tell you. Let me go to the App Store real quick. I like Keynote. I like them, but... The I like Keynote better than... When I choose a template in Keynote, all I get is a blank white template. I, I don't get these beautiful things they show you when you select the template. Well, they actually do have... They actually do have different templates. And I've done some presentations in Keynote, but... Okay. My, Microsoft Word is 10 bucks. No, that's... I'm sorry. Microsoft... Rob and I'll come see you after class. <laughs> you would probably clear it up in about two minutes. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't see it. But it's... Let me do this. Microsoft Office. Well, maybe they don't sell it in the App Store. Maybe you have to get it for Microsoft. That would, that would make sense for Microsoft to do that to you. I don't know, you can check it, but check out, check out OpenOffice. If it runs, it's going to be your best bet. Okay. Okay? Um, and yeah, that's personal choice, whatever, whatever you want to do. You can, you can certainly do a lot with Keynote and, and pages and numbers. You can have them save as a PDF file. You can have them save as their own format. And the other thing that's cool about that is 
when you do that, they do use they do use Apple's cloud. So if I do something in Keynote on my uh, iPad, and then if I open uh, Keynote on here, I may have taken them off my home screen. If I open Keynote on here, then it's it, well here it is. There we go. So through through iTunes or through the cloud, actually, I don't care to know what's new. I just want you to open. You so check your connection, we we lost our screen. Oh, that's because I'm. I keep forgetting to do that when I'm sorry. Then people look at me politely and they don't say anything. Okay, clap on. Sit back. <laughs> there we go. All right. So here, here's some keynote presentations that I actually did on the tablet, but of course they show up on the Mac. So I have automatically they're using iCloud and they're in one place. Uh, I've done some nice presentations in Keynote and I was at a WCR meeting one time and I virtually wrote the whole presentation in an hour from the time I got there to the time I was supposed to speak, uh, which was a little nerve-wracking, but anyway. So yeah, they're, they're good products. What I recommend, let me go back to here real quick, and this works really well with Dropbox, and that is Check out the back. Come on. Come on, there we go. So in this case, I'm going to open up Microsoft Word as an example. And when you configure Word, you can configure it for OneDrive, but they also let you configure it obviously for Dropbox. And you can see I've got Dropbox on there. So I'm going to go back to my Dropbox, tap on it, go to my Frank folder, open up Hi Frank, there it is. Now, again I'm going to use dictation, and now I can come along and say, and I made these changes on the iPad, period. Now when I go back one top at the top left corner is my navigation. If I go back to here, and I can hit save. Now you can't see this happening, but as we speak, it's downloading to my computer right now. It's already done. It's already done. It already pushed it to the cloud, and the cloud already pushed it to my computer. So as long as your computer's on, iCloud or Dropbox stays synced. Does that uh, audio function work with email also? Oh yeah, Siri dictation works with, it's not email or anything, it's just your keyboard. To the left of my space bar yeah. is my dictation key. If you don't have it turned on, um, on your Mac, I can show you later, but it also works with your portable devices. So I, I love that. The other way I could have gotten to it, if you think about it, is I could have gone to the folder first. So I'm going to exit, in fact I'm going to close Word, close everything. Now I'm going to go to my Dropbox folder. And Dropbox has recently made a seamless transition where they interface directly with things like Word. So in my Dropbox folder now, I'll go to my Frank folder. There it is. And then I'll tap on Hi Frank. Now you're going to see the change I just made. But now let's say I want to edit it. So one way I opened Word and then found it, the other way I opened Dropbox, which launches Word. To do that, in the lower right-hand corner, in the last year, Dropbox has added that pencil. And that pencil allows me to open it with Word. And so they'll just send it right off to Word. It's totally seamless. It never actually lands on here. I, I, it does temporarily. Now I can edit it. and here's more edits on the iPad. Then I can save it, and it's saving it back to the cloud. It never stayed on here. And now I just saw it land on my computer. So once again, if I opened it now on my computer, and this makes for a really powerful system when you understand that you're not limited to just looking at stuff, that you can actually edit stuff. I can do a PowerPoint presentation and finish it on here. It's all in real time, okay? Um, why don't we, because I like to take a break just before the hour, why don't we take a 10 minute stretch. When we come back, I'll show you a few apps that I like that work really well with Dropbox as well.
Did you get dictation working on your Mac? I didn't. I don't see it. On